This is a video for people who are considering learning kanji and maybe don't know where to start, maybe started, gave up, because let's face it, trying to learn 2,136 Chinese characters is a mountain. Okay, now other people have made some great videos, like I'm thinking about uh, Chris Broad from Abroad in Japan. He's made an absolutely brilliant uh, video about learning with the Heisei. Uh, remembering the kanji approach which I've been using as well and it's very very good um, it's got its critics and some people will say to you well oh, it's it's no good learning uh, with the Heisig, uh remembering the kanji volume 1 approach because you don't learn the readings but just hold your horses a moment because what you have to understand is that being able to recognise a kanji character, um, to know roughly what it means, um, is just good enough to be really, really useful and practical. Okay, now sure, if you learn the entire Joyo uh, kanji with Heisig's method and then stop, you could be a little bit more advanced than where I am right now, but I'm able to walk around making sense of the kanji I see around me, or um, having a pretty good idea what something is about. Um, for example, I go into a restaurant, now I may not know uh, how to say the, the actual dish on the menu, but I might know that it's got cow, so it's beef, I know that it's uh, fried in oil, because I might know the kanji for frying, I might know the kanji for oil, so if I see cow, oil, fry, oh, it's fried beef, <laughs> okay, knowing the kanji for noodles is useful, knowing the kanji for rice is new, pretty useful, boil, etc. Um, now, okay, the problem comes, of course, when the waiter comes over and you cannot actually say the name of the dish because you can't uh, know the, the, the reading of the kanji. Okay, however, um, if you're like me, maybe a few months ago, I was getting fed up with, uh, like, pointing at something <laughs> and going... <laughs> Kore uh, Kudasai, and then getting the dish and going, oh, uh, that's not what I thought it was uh, going to be. That's not even, like, uh, I'm a bit disappointed. It's sort of like uh, uh, something boiled in a pot, and I'm like, I, I really fancied eating something grilled. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Heisig uh, is certainly useful, and I wouldn't knock it. Um, right, so where to start? Okay, now Japanese kids, or well, Japanese people, take about 10 years to learn Joyo Kanji, um, which I haven't got 10 years to spend trying to get literate in Japanese. Um, so uh, as a Westerner and as an adult, um, I've got things, I've got skills that Japanese kiddies don't have yet. Like, I've got an enormous English vocabulary, okay? So if I can actually take a kanji symbol and know the rough meaning of it, connect it with a story, great, I can remember it, and when I see it, I can make a bit more sense out of what I'm seeing. Um, right, but that's that's good. Um, but then you'll get the naysayers. Oh, it's no good just learning the kanji and not being able to say the words, Kevin. Right, well, yeah, I kind of agree, long term. Um, but don't beat yourself up about it. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. We've got to start somewhere. Okay, so rather than rote learning, um, the stroke order. Stroke order is important with kanji, no doubt about it, but uh, to try and learn kanji by stroke order 
is not only really boring, um, but it's inefficient. Um, and kanji are um, composed of parts that are, some people call radicals, some people call them primitives or bicycles and primitives. Um, getting into a sort of technical flipping argument about, you know, are they radicals, are they primitives, this stuff for kind of language snobs, and I'm time to be worried about that. Basically, um, let's take the kanji for sun. Okay, now let me find one moment. Just going to pause this for one moment. This kanji you see a lot. This kanji is sun. He. Okay, if I remove that and I say, whoa, what's this kanji? This one is moon. Ooh. Okay, but look at this. Wow. What about this kanji then? Whoa, I'm writing that one. <gasps> it's bright. Oh, so what's bright? Well, the brightness of the sun and the moon together is bright. I can remember that. Uh, I want to be able to write kanji. Okay, so what I tend to do is at the start of each day, we're using Heisig's approach. I write out 15 different kanji 10 or so times in a row. And while I'm writing them out, I'm thinking about a story that makes uh, me connect the primitives or the radical parts of the kanji to the kanji as a whole. And I remembered them very well doing it that way. Okay, it's what Heisig calls imaginative memory. It's basically uh, create a story that's personal to you and you can connect it with the character and you don't forget it. Okay, the next thing I thought was, okay, let's use Memrise or Anki, um, if you like, a space re repetition uh, application to kind of test yourself daily um, to keep those stories uh, in your mind until you no longer need the story. Um, now, one word of caution is that when you're using space repetition, it's testing you on the stuff that you forget most often. Okay, so you think, ah, oh, God, I've got to about a thousand kanji now, and I'm only getting about 70%. Well, actually, that's 70% of the stuff that you often forget. Okay, and once you've learnt uh, a lot of kanji, you're able to start. Um, having very very good guesses at what something says like for example I think in English um, when we realize that un means to negate the word untidy <laughs> like me um, uh, undress <laughs> okay if I was to put that into kanji you you would maybe learn kanji that has the same sort of meaning as un something and if it's got the same reading when it's used to un something yeah um, you've just added a hell of a lot of words to your um, vocabulary I think um, we, uh, a while ago I learned the the word uh, bunker okay culture um, and then quickly I learned hibunka ah uncultured oh so maybe hi in front of a word um, can be used many times and suddenly I've added a hell of a lot of words to my vocabulary I think uh, I'm not worrying about grammar but I know enough grammar um, but to uh, keep reading it I, I no longer want to think about grammar I just want to speak um, without much thought having to be trying to like word a cogs around to kind of structure the sentence. I just want to go out with production um, without it having to be kind of filtered through a thought process. I want it to be natural. So anyway, I think that just about wraps it up. Um, now today I went out and uh, 
filmed a few uh, kanji uh, around me just to give you an idea of um, like there's a lot of kanji where I don't know the actual readings but I know the roughly what they mean and living in Japan there's a lot of kanji with the English written about it so kind of useful when you're in Japan um, to kind of reinforce uh, what you're learning. Anyway, without further ado, um, here's that. So in this video I'm just going to give a quick guide to some kanji you'd see around in Japan, like no walking, no running. Um, over here we've got danger. Okay, um, here's ticket fares, caution, chew. Over on this side we've got what? Not permitted. Okay, um, Kencho Maya. Uh, Ken means prefecture. Uh, John comes off his and Maya in front of the Maya in Japan. Um, okay, inside the train we've got door number two. Uh, caution about the door. Um, and then here we've got a bit of hiragana, Chiba. Uh, Chiba, with the kanji in the middle there. 1,000 leads. Um, on the left hand side, you'll see a very common kanji, Cho, a uh, village. Um, watch your step. That first kanji is Ashi, your leg. Uh, donation of blood. I don't even know the word for blood, but uh, okay, line. Uh, say. Um, okay, extinguish fire product. Um, extinguish fire plug. Ocha, tea. Or wash room or, or wash your hands. <laughs> um, okay, lifelong learning centre. Um, okay, push or soup. Um, very easy to know that one. And of course, the other one, pull, hiku. Um, okay, yes, we can read it in English, but what fun to read banana or <laughs> Okay. And here we've got Little River, and then again, Caution. So it's Caution must be taken in Japan. Here's Don't Park, not permitted again, because you don't stop in front of.